So, hi, we're the Tokaholics. Oh, did we do this already? Dude, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna do the whole thing, the whole bad parts. Like, yeah, I the remember whole talking like two hours about this. Yeah, it, it's gonna be really long. But oh, shit. It, we're not gonna be drunk. We're not gonna go get whiskey midway. Probably, yes. Yo, you just but, said it. You just I mean, jinxed the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we're the Tokyoholics. My name is Ro. Jin. And today we're going to talk about the bad parts about konbinis in Japan. Japan. So you might be familiar that my hair is black now. His hair is a lot more messy. It's okay. Just you don't need to explain. Explain it. They all understand us. Okay? Yeah. Last time we got way too wasted and midway into the segment, we got too drunk. We knocked down the camera once. The frame got all messed up. We're too messed up that nobody could possibly understand what the hell we're talking about. So, um, here is Ryo's laptop. I'm gonna peel off whatever this is. He never peels off anything on his devices. So you see that thing? What the <laughs> Don't peel that thing off! Three, two, one. So point number one, convenience stores in Japan makes you buy sh you don't ever, ever need. The whole like pretty image that they make uh, of convenience is that we got everything that you need. They also have a lot of stuff that you don't need and they make you buy them. And you buy them without really noticing that you really need them. That's what's bad about it. Yeah, it, you just go there to just get a, like a drink or something and you end up with like 10, 20 dollars worth of things that you don't even need. Like who needs band-aids? But you think, oh, maybe I might need band-aids in the future. So you just get band-aids. Oh, I see, I see. You so know what so I mean? it's like, like, yes, they are useful. They are very needy at a certain time, but it makes you buy it even if you don't need it right now. Point number two, you get too dependent on convenience stores. The reason why people get too dependent is there are so many convenience stores in all of Japan. It's everywhere. Yeah, like if there was a Sahara Desert in Tokyo, we would have like 500 million convenience stores. <laughs> Honestly, like it's all about monopoly, I think. And the fact is that convenience stores are killing all businesses around Japan, whether it's liquor stores. We got a sparkling bottle of red rosé from a convenience store. So like, why would you even go to a liquor store? You don't. You don't. <laughs> Point number three. Convenies are consumers. Convenies are consumers. Okay. I'm gonna wrap this without any beats by just talking. Okay. Point number three. Convenies are consumers of big. <laughs> Point number three, combis are beacons of consumerism. And I'm, that's f***ing wrong, okay? <laughs> well, what do you mean by that? We're like point number one, point number two, like, mm. yeah, we're approaching it from different angles, but we're all trying to say the same thing. They want us to like spend the money. It's like to the point where we're not even like content, even with like buying whatever we need. At a certain point, you gotta really think about like what it's really good. And it's really not good for Japanese people because imagine you move to a different country, you're so reliant, you're so too dependent, you're such a good consumer, towards the convenience store that you woke up at 2 a.m. you're hungry and you're like I need to go to a convenience to buy this 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 <laughs> no just shut the f up yeah. and sleep okay yeah. it's 2 a.m. that's what normal people do point number four everything in convenience stores are kind of expensive for example like if, uh, compared to like buying a cup of coffee at Starbucks mm. if you want to buy a cup of coffee in 7-eleven which yeah. is you know it's a good coffee like we talked about this already yeah and compared to Starbucks it's cheaper but like in general like if you compare that to like a supermarket then it, it's five to ten percent more expensive so let me give you an example I really love Dr. Pepper and it's like one of my favorite things so what I do is I go to Costco I buy like a 30 can pack I finished that in two weeks it's like, oh my god, it's so bad for me. Anyway, whatever. What? Hey, hey, I can consume whatever the f I want. Anyway, whatever, anyway. Dr. Pepper, I f***ing love that thing. If I really need it, it's like I can't go home without drinking Dr. Pepper. And then like, I can't help it but go to like a company and buy one. Like, it's priced like, you know, a dollar, like 120 yen. So it's like, you know, a dollar ten. At Costco, like wholesale, you can buy that for like 60 cents. Okay, so once in a while, sure, like you can just, you know, give yourself a little reward. But if you get rely on that, then you realize how much of the money that they're taking. 
when you think about this and you kind of realize how much of a, uh, you know, there's thieves. So we should really actually go buy wine at Costco. But I guess like Costco is not available right now. So what the solution probably for that is to go buy it at the convenience store. Uh, yeah, so we, we already started our next one. Haha, <laughs> don't mind us. Point number five, erotica books are out in the open. Now this is especially bad for children. Okay, like when we were in the, when we were kids, like in the 90s, it was fine for us because you know, like that's how we grew up. Like, yeah, that's how we grew up. I'm gonna be okay with it. Well, what do you mean, bro? What do you mean, bro? Yeah, like it might be like points of interest to little kids, but I mean, but that's not like, that's beyond the point. Like, of course, it's the company's responsibility to stop those kids like from ever like uh, seeing those things in the open. And there's like this book section where yeah. you can see like fashion magazines, like all sorts of magazines. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's like this six inch uh, flap and it says adult content booked on the side. And that's all the section divider there is. Like, so whenever you go past the, com go into the company, you kind of end up going through that part. And then you go to the other sections. Point number six, privately owned convenience stores has disappeared. This is a bad point because these privately owned convenience stores are run by these families. So they start convenience stores in their area. And what happens usually when their profits go up is that big chains like 7-Eleven, Family Mart, Lawson's come in, make a bunch of convenience stores near these family convenience stores and just mess it all up. They just like eat it up. Yeah, they're evil basically. Yeah, like I can't help but say it's evil, but I have to be careful about the word because in the name of capitalism, like mm. it's like fair. Maybe it's fair. And that's a problem like where I think um, the government needs to step in, like make sure that these sorts of establishments are protected. Yeah. But they're not protected. So all these companies gobble up like these smaller chops. Numeho! Who's that? Point number seven. Point card. Japan loves point cards. Like you get a cent worth of points per dollar spent. That's pretty good. See, that's the problem, man. Like, yeah, maybe it's useful to like, you know, store up and then maybe you can buy something nice with that. But if you get points for every dollar you spend, so like 1% cash back, let's say you buy like $100 worth, then you get dollar back, right? Maybe for that you say, okay, I'll use my point card. But for other stuff, you're like, hey, I'm just gonna get a cent back. It's not worth much. And then you're too bothered to use the point card. It doesn't make you think rationally. I was more angry in the other video, but yeah. yeah. Cause you go in there for just the points, but you know you don't have all your joints. For me, the biggest frustration about point cards is every single convenience store to a shopping mall to everywhere, even a hairdresser has a point. Card. Oh yeah. So no, every time they ask you, do you have a point card? I'm like, no, I don't have a point card. Yeah. I don't want to make a new point card. Just, just take my money, give me this thing so that I can purchase and like yeah. leave. Okay. We don't give a about the one cent return. We wouldn't be coming to a convenience store, which is cl clearly more expensive, if we are a budget type. It's like so expensive, you're too dependent, you go there just for the things you get out of convenience, and it's no longer convenient when every single time you shop there, they're just asking you, do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have this point card? Do you have this point card? Are you, what are you paying with? Yeah, it's sometimes like, they ask you like, do you have this point card? And I'm like, yeah. no, but and then, but then do you have, do you have this, this point, point card? card? I'm like, no, I have not any point card. It just doesn't make any sense. And this is what the problem is. Point number eight, toilets. The worst point is that some convenience stores have a bathroom, some don't. You know what? They all do, except they just don't allow you to use it. Come on, it's not about convenience store policy. For any shop, if you have someone like, he's about to shit in his pants, just let him take a shit. Why can't you just like go live your life without accepting? Why can't you go live your life with... <laughs> Why can't you just live on? with someone maybe breaking whatever rules there are but just for human to human like in that oh. sort of level just help that dude so when you want to take a shit where are you gonna shit your pants or piss your pants and you're just in a panic mode you run into a convenience store and you tell the guy point blank look at his face and tell him i am going to 
this right now. This has actually worked with me in the past. I've been inside of the backside of these yeah. fridges with these alcoholic drinks, just go into the staff bathroom. But not a lot of bathrooms are like that, and these things are not out in the open. Point number nine, Japanese speaking staff are not that available. Nowadays, a lot of companies, like most of them are uh, foreign workers. It's fine until the point where you're a Japanese native, and then you're like, ah, oh, fukuranais. Uh, yeah, like, I don't need a plastic bag. I gotta top up this uh, transportation card where it stores currency, okay? And then, yeah. and then I'm gonna pay with this. These sorts of everyday conversations are really hard to do with these people. Yeah. So what happens is convenience stores around Japan have a manual. There's this big, thick manual you have to remember everything of. So you remember how to say, Hey, welcome to Family Mart. Or do you want a bag? You all know these questions, but what you don't really understand is like the concept. You just remember the phrase and you think if somebody said this, they probably mean this. So you say this according to the manual. And it's not like they speak English either, okay? Yeah. So point number 10 is that workers treat you like shit. Now, it depends on the convenience stores a lot. Yeah. Because a lot of convenience stores have really nice stuff, whether it's foreign or whether it's Japanese. What I'm talking about are these people who are just absolutely terrible. These people are just not nice as a person. Real yeah. likes to go to the convenience like late at a night. A lot, a lot, yeah. And then usually, if you have a ship late at night, you don't expect people to come because you know because of time of the hour. But people who are on late night shifts, they get paid more. And then you know the whole point that they're there is to be ready for the customers. <laughs> but if you're not ready for the customer, you're not doing your job. It's as simple as yeah. that. And I don't have high standards. I mean, honestly, if they're stalking, I would not mind waiting at the cashier for like 30 minutes while they stop. I mean, I'm talking about these that are just like treating customers like because they don't want to do their job. Like you get, what are you, what are you even paid for if you don't want to do their job? Moral of the story. Mm. Let's bring it down to konbinis yeah. and the moral. Okay. So what's our conclusion? Jean is not drinking as much as usual. Oh, oh no! Oh sh! Oh sh! Oh sh! So those were the ten things that's wrong with Japanese convenience. Please like, subscribe, and hit that thing. There's a bell, and then there's like. Yeah. If you click that bell, you can see us whenever we upload. And we no. upload pretty maybe, irregularly. Maybe you can't even beat me, because I don't remember half the <laughs> I said here. And then last of all, please comment on the videos. Like, Yeah, tell me what's the most frustrating thing about convenience stores in your country. We're the Tokyoholics. My name is Ro. Jin. And thank you for watching. All this man, all this, all this thing. Pure, pure shit. Pure. <laughs> what the f what the f are you doing? What the f? Pure this shit, man. What, what the f? What are you doing? Pure this. <laughs>